Friday, August 25th, 2023, topic, Operation Barbarossa. Please pardon any visual and informational inaccuracies in this entirely AI-generated video. This text explores how Adolf Hitler used the legend of Frederick Barbarossa to justify his invasion of the Soviet Union, framing it as a racial and ideological war. The legend of Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa, who is said to be asleep in a cave and will awaken to restore Germany in its hour of need, was used by the Nazis for political imagery. Hitler changed the name of the invasion of the Soviet Union to Operation Barbarossa, symbolizing his belief that this would usher in the Nazi thousand-year Reich. Adolf Hitler, in his manifesto Mein Kampf, declared his intention to invade the Soviet Union to secure living space for Germany. He portrayed the Soviet Union as populated by non-Aryan subhumans ruled by Jewish Bolshevik conspirators. The Nazi policy was to kill, deport, or enslave the majority of Russian and other Slavic populations and repopulate the land with Germanic peoples. German troops were indoctrinated with anti-Bolshevik, anti-Semitic, and anti-Slavic ideology, and the war was portrayed as an ideological and racial war. In August 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, a non-aggression agreement that secretly outlined the division of Eastern European states between them. This led to the German and Soviet invasions of Poland, triggering World War II. Despite their pact, both sides were suspicious of each other's intentions. Negotiations for Soviet entry into the Axis Pact with Germany, Italy, and Japan failed. The pact ended when Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941. Stalin's brutal dictatorship and the resulting inexperienced Red Army leadership were used by the Nazis to justify their assault on the Soviet Union. Hitler used the tension over Balkan territories as a pretext for invasion. Despite warnings from high-ranking military officers, Hitler anticipated economic benefits from occupying Western Russia. The final military plans for the invasion, codenamed Operation Barbarossa, were received by Hitler on the 5th of December, 1940. The invasion was initially set for May 1941, but was delayed for further preparations and better weather. Before the campaign in the Balkans had finished, Germany began massing troops near the Soviet border. By February 1941, 680,000 German soldiers were gathered on the Romanian-Soviet border. Hitler secretly moved upwards of 3 million German troops and approximately 690,000 Axis soldiers to the Soviet border regions. Despite this, Stalin believed that Nazi Germany was unlikely to attack only two years after signing the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, resulting in slow Soviet preparation. The German invasion, known as Operation Barbarossa, was postponed from the 15th of May to the 22nd of June, 1941, due to the unforeseen contingency of invading Yugoslavia and Greece. In the 1930s, the Soviet Union significantly increased its defense expenditure and developed a modern operational doctrine for the Red Army. However, during Joseph Stalin's Great Purge, much of the officer corps of the Red Army was executed or imprisoned, severely impacting the Army's competence. Despite this, about 80% of the officers dismissed during the Great Purge were reinstated by 1941. The Red Army also developed war plans identifying the Wehrmacht as the most significant threat, but Stalin disagreed with the proposed strategies. On the 22nd of June, 1941, the Axis powers led by Germany began the invasion of the Soviet Union, known as Operation Barbarossa. Despite receiving a warning from a German deserter, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin reportedly dismissed it as disinformation. The invasion began with bombings of major cities in Soviet-occupied Poland and an artillery barrage on Red Army defenses. German forces were accompanied by Finnish and Romanian units. The news of the invasion was broadcast to the Soviet population by Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov, who called for a patriotic war. The German ground and air attack destroyed the Soviet command and control within hours, paralyzing all levels of command. Stalin initially disbelieved the scale of the catastrophe. He issued directives for a counteroffensive, but these were not based on a realistic assessment of the situation. It took several days for the Soviet leadership to comprehend the magnitude of the initial defeat. During the initial stages of the German invasion of the Soviet Union in Wood II, the Luftwaffe, German Air Force, targeted Soviet troop concentrations, supply dumps, airfields, and command centers. The Soviets, under orders not to fire on German aircraft, suffered significant losses. 
the Luftwaffe reportedly destroyed over 3,100 Soviet aircraft in the first three days. Despite these successes, by July 5th, the Luftwaffe had lost 491 aircraft and had only about 70% of its initial strength. In June 1941, Army Group North attacked the Soviet Northwestern Front, breaking through its 8th and 11th armies. Despite a counterattack, the Soviets were defeated and forced to withdraw. German forces, led by Erich von Manstein, secured a bridgehead across the western Dvina River, forcing the Soviets to abandon their river defenses. By July, the German forces had advanced significantly, capturing Peskov and reaching Leningrad Oblast, only about 250 kilometers from their primary objective, Leningrad. The northern section of Army Group South faced the southwestern front, the largest concentration of Soviet forces, while the southern section faced the southern front. The Pripyat marshes and the Carpathian Mountains posed challenges to the Army Group's sections. On the 22nd of June, only the northern section attacked, but the terrain impeded their assault. The German 1st Panzer Group and 6th Army broke through the Soviet 5th Army. The Soviets launched counterattacks but were defeated. On the 30th of June, the remaining Soviet forces were ordered to withdraw to the Stalin line. On the 2nd of July, the southern section of Army Group South invaded Soviet Moldavia. During the initial stages of the invasion, the Luftwaffe destroyed the Western Front's air force and paralyzed communication lines. The German 2nd and 3rd Panzer Groups bypassed key Soviet defenses and pressed towards Minsk and Vilnius. Despite counterattacks, the Soviets were defeated and forced to withdraw. By the 27th of June, the Germans had captured Minsk and encircled the Western Front. Stalin relieved the commander of the Western Front, Dmitry Pavlov, of his command and later executed him for cowardice and criminal incompetence. Despite orders to halt, the German panzer groups continued their advance. During German-Finnish negotiations, Finland insisted on remaining neutral unless attacked by the Soviet Union. However, Germany provoked the Soviet Union into attacking Finland, leading to a massive bombing on the 25th of June against major Finnish cities. The Finnish parliament decided to go to war against the Soviet Union. Finland was divided into two operational zones, with northern Finland staging a pincer movement on the port of Murmansk, and southern Finland aiming to recapture Finnish Karelia and the Karelian Isthmus. In July 1941, a rainstorm typical of Belarusian summers slowed the progress of the panzers of Army Group Center, giving the Soviets time to organize a massive counterattack. The Germans defeated this counterattack thanks to the coincidental presence of the Luftwaffe's only squadron of tank-busting aircraft. The Germans captured Smolensk on the 16th of July, trapping three Soviet armies. However, the Germans had underestimated Soviet strength and were facing logistical problems with reinforcements and provisions. Hitler decided to change strategy, aiming to defeat the Soviet state by economic means, depriving them of the industrial capacity to continue the war. In June 1941, Germany launched a two-pronged attack to capture Murmansk, Russia. The northern attack was halted by the Soviet 14th Army at the Litsa River. The second attack, involving German and Finnish forces, aimed to cut the Murmansk Railway near Kandalaksha. Despite initial successes, including the capture of Sala and Kestenga, the advance was stopped by Soviet resistance in Arctic conditions. The front became a stalemate for the remainder of Operation Barbarossa. The Finnish army launched an attack on Soviet forces in Karelia on the 10th of July, aiming to cut the Soviet forces in half and recapture Finnish territories. By the 16th of July, the Finnish units reached Lake Ladoga, achieving their goal. The army of Karelia continued to advance, encircling large Soviet formations and capturing key towns. By the beginning of September, Finland had restored its pre-winter war borders. By mid-July, German forces had advanced near Kiev and trapped three Soviet armies near Uman. The second panzer group crossed the river Desna, trapping four Soviet armies. However, by August, the Luftwaffe's inventory was diminishing due to combat and struggled to maintain local air superiority. Despite weather difficulties, the VVS had an advantage due to pre-war experience with cold weather flying and operating from intact bases. By December, the VVS had matched the Luftwaffe and was pressing to achieve air superiority. In August 1941, the 4th Panzer Group, reinforced by tanks from Army Group Center, launched an attack on Leningrad. Despite initial success, the final push towards the city proved difficult and resulted in high casualties. 
Hitler then decided to starve Leningrad into submission rather than storm it. The Panzer forces were redirected to support Army Group Center in its attack on Moscow, leaving Leningrad under siege for over two years. Before attacking Moscow, German forces needed to complete operations in Kiev. They successfully encircled Soviet forces in Kiev by the 16th of September, leading to a 10-day battle. The Germans claim to have captured 665,000 Soviet soldiers, but the actual figure is likely around 220,000. Soviet losses were significant, contributing to the German assumption that Operation Typhoon, the attack on Moscow, could still succeed despite their own heavy losses and exhaustion. After successfully concluding operations in Kiev, Army Group South advanced to capture the Donbas region and Crimea. The Soviet Southern Front launched an attack on the 26th of September, but by the 1st of October, the 1st Panzer Army had encircled the two attacking Soviet armies. By the 11th of October, the Soviet 9th and 18th Armies had been annihilated, with 106,332 men captured and 212 tanks destroyed or captured. This defeat allowed the Germans to capture Kharkov on the 24th of October in the Donbas region later that month. The German Finnish advance on the Murmansk Railway in central Finland resumed at Kairali, trapping the defending Soviet Corps. Despite initial progress, the front stalemated. A new offensive was launched towards the railway on the 30th of October, coming within 30 kilometers of the railway. However, due to diplomatic pressure from the U.S., the Finnish government halted the advance to avoid disrupting Allied aid shipments to the Soviet Union. This ended the German-Finnish effort in central and northern Finland. In 1941, under German pressure, Finland expanded its offensive activities in Karelia to aid the Germans in their Leningrad operation. Finland stopped its advance just short of Leningrad, but agreed to restart its offensive into Soviet Karelia, capturing Olenets, Petrozavodsk, Medvezhegorsk, and Povenets. On the 7th of December, Finland halted all offensive operations and went on the defensive. Operation Typhoon, the German drive to Moscow, began on the 30th of September, 1941. Despite initial successes, including the capture of over 500,000 Soviet prisoners, the German advance was slowed by worsening weather and supply issues. The pause in the German advance allowed the Soviets to consolidate their positions and bring in reinforcements, including 30 divisions of Siberian troops. The German attack resumed on the 15th of November, but faced stiff resistance from multiple Soviet armies. The failure of the Battle of Moscow marked a turning point in World War II, as it forced Germany to revise its plans for a quick defeat of the Soviet Union. Hitler blamed the early onset of winter and severe cold for the failed campaign, but the main reasons were German military unpreparedness, poor intelligence, logistical difficulties, high attrition, heavy casualties, and overextension of forces. The Red Army's ability to counterattack effectively surprised the Germans, leading to significant losses in manpower and resources. Despite initial successes in the Eastern Front during Wuntu, the German army failed to capture the oil fields of Baku, leading to a disastrous defeat at the Battle of Stalingrad in 1943. The Soviet armament's production outpaced Germany's, and the Soviets launched successful counteroffensives, eventually occupying much of the previously German-held territory by 1944. By 1945, the Soviets controlled the Eastern Front and were advancing on Berlin, leading to Hitler's suicide and the end of the war in Europe. Despite the Soviet Union not signing the Geneva Convention, Germany was obligated to treat Soviet POWs humanely. However, Hitler's call for a struggle for existence against the Soviet Union led to war crimes against Soviet prisoners. Hitler's commissar order called for all Soviet political commissars to be shot without trial. German soldiers were informed that their battle required ruthless and vigorous measures against Bolsheviks, Jews, and any resistance. By the end of the war, 58% of all Soviet prisoners had died in German captivity. During Wedi II, German soldiers frequently committed violent sexual acts against Soviet women, often in the form of gang rape. Historians suggest that the German army's equating of Russia with communism led to a culture where everything was fair game. Military decrees essentially authorized such brutality, making prosecution of sexual offenses nearly impossible. Sexual violence was often inflicted in civilian housing, further limiting detection. Jewish women were often murdered after being sexually assaulted. Operation Barbarossa was the largest military operation in history. 
opening the Eastern Front of World War II. It resulted in over 26 million Soviet deaths and significant economic and landscape damage. The operation and Germany's subsequent defeat led to a division of Europe into Eastern and Western blocs. The USSR filled the political vacuum in the East, leading to the creation of buffer and client states to protect against future attacks. This resulted in Eastern Europe becoming communist while Western Europe fell under U.S. influence. Thus, Hitler manipulated historical legends and racial ideologies to justify his brutal invasion, painting it as a righteous crusade for the Germanic people. 